Okay, uh, appreciate everybody being here today. Uh, excited to have another opportunity uh, this week, coming off obviously a very disappointing uh, performance uh, this past week. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've got, a, got another tough challenge. We're going to be on the road here for the next couple weeks. Uh, another really good football team, you know, very similar to the team we just played in so many ways. You know, they've, they've got four losses by a total of 21 points. You know, so they're, they're uh, I think they've had the lead in every single one of those games. So it's a really tough uh, uh, team to, to, to beat. Uh, really talented across the board, probably one of the most experienced teams in the country in all of college football coming coming into the season. Had everybody back on offense. And, uh, had a couple of their starters out last week. You know, expect both those guys probably to be back this week. Uh, but this is, uh, again, a team that's you know, four plays from being undefeated. I mean, they're, they're very similar to the group we just played. And very similar in style. You know, line up one of the best rushing teams in the country. These guys can really, can really run the football. Uh, so obviously, with how we played last week, that that's a that's going to be an area we've got to have uh, get back on track and have have uh, great improvement this week to have a chance to win the game. Uh, but very impressed with them offensively, quarterback, both quarterbacks, really good players. We don't really change what they do regardless of who who's uh, at quarterback. Uh, it's a talented uh, uh, duo there, but. But Drones is the is the you know he's a 230 something pound kid. He can really run. He can extend. He's a good thrower. Uh, and then the back Tootin is as good as I think there is in the country. He's a very good player. He's explosive. He's uh, can run away from you in the open field. Uh, and uh, very similar again to what we saw last week. A lot of stretch. Uh, a little bit different, but they're you know they're they're. They've got a little bit of midline and, and what we call lamb, uh, you know, built into it uh, as far as how they go about trying to split your defense. Uh, good receivers at every spot, you know, all three positions. Uh, tight ends are involved as well in what they do in the run and pass game. But uh, very, very good players uh, outside. So it's a complete offense. They're doing a nice job. And again, uh, you know, two of those losses, I believe, uh, came in uh, overtime. Uh, or at least this past one came in overtime, and the other one came on a, a review of the last play of the game. So uh, it's a team that will battle and compete to the end, and got a lot of respect for uh, Brent and uh, the job that he's done up there, and, and the team that they've got. And again, we're gonna have to play, we're gonna have to play really, really well uh, to to go win this game. Defensively, one of the best fronts we've seen. Uh, you know, number 52. I think he's second in the nation in sacks. Uh, they'll roam him around a little bit. Uh, he's a dynamic pass rusher. Two inside guys are very good. Uh, they really play five or six guys up front pretty regular. Uh, and uh, 16 is is a really, really special inside player. Uh, he's, he's got a great pass rush. They'll put him outside on the edge some because they're very confident in his pass rush ability. Um, and, and a really, really good back seven. So overall, again, just a complete team, ton of experience. Uh, guys that play that play with a lot of confidence, play tough, play physical, and you know, uh, gonna have to go up there and, and uh, certainly play better than we did this past week, and, and see if we can get back on track, uh, find a way to find a way to win. And I also want to say happy birthday to my sweet and precious 80-year-old mom today. She probably is not watching this, but maybe somebody will tell her I gave her a shout out. But um, Happy birthday, mom! I love you. Appreciate you. What a what a what a great inspiration uh, my mom has been. Uh, she's a miracle. She really is. She's a she is a living, breathing miracle. Um, to what she's been able to to do in her life and to still be here. Uh, you know, if you know much about her, she spent you know in and out of the hospital the first ten years of her life at Cr Crippen Children's Hospital. Or, Said she wouldn't have kids, we'd go to normal school, none of that stuff, and, and end up having uh, three sons and seven grandsons and a couple of great grandsons and uh, no granddaughters yet. Maybe those will come uh, somewhere along the way here. But but uh, happy birthday to my mom. I mean, it really is a, a miracle that she's she's 80 years old today and still going strong. So uh, want to get that out there. And Larry. Larry, yeah, happy birthday, Papa Larry. He was he was uh, yesterday, 
poor old Larry. Uh, he, he, mom gets the whole month, and Larry got like from 12 to 6 yesterday. That was about <laughs> it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so pretty, uh, pretty, pretty uh, neat. And uh, one of my old teammates, Derek Warren, his birthday is today, too, because he always calls my mom on this day because she has the same day. Uh, happy birthday to Papa Larry yesterday and, and mom uh, uh, today. All right, any, any questions? <clears throat> After a performance like like Saturday, and kind of knowing now that it's it's out of your control, as a coach, what is your message to your team coming back in on Sunday, Monday, to say, hey, you know, this isn't over. We still got games to play. How sure. do you, how do you convey that message to keep them involved? Yeah, I mean, I just said it last night. You know, life is hard. Football's hard. Failure's hard. Disappointment's hard. You know, it, it takes courage to to continue to. Keep going, you know. When something doesn't go your way, you got to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and go. I wish, you know, every. I wish we never lost a game in history. There's, there's how many undefeated teams are there in the Power Four? Seven. In the Power Seven. Or the Power Four. Power Four. How many? Probably not many. Is Oregon undefeated? Yeah. Anybody else? Oregon, BYU, BYU, Miami, Indiana. Miami. Indiana. Indiana. Not many. You know, I mean, it's it's hard. I mean, and there's and it's going to get harder. And by the end of the year, it probably won't be any any undefeated. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's disappointing when you're in, you're in control of your destiny and, and then all of a sudden you, you're not. Um, so we don't control our destiny anymore. But you know what we do control? Our decision, what we do today. We still control our effort, our accountability, our attitude, our work ethic. We control how we respond. You know, we, we control all that. You know, yeah, we don't control, you know, we, we can't. We could go win all of our games and, we may not get to Charlotte. We, 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 we don't control that. Uh, but, you know, hey, you just you, you got to go play the next game. That's, that's why they call it a season. You know, you play a season every single year. You try to uh, have the very best season that you can have. And if, in totality, in our time here, we've had a lot of really, really good seasons. You know, in some seasons, we've won the championship more than most uh, national championships and league championships. It's hard to do. Uh, so, you know, you just you, you try to coach and teach. I think I think it's important. There's always a lesson, and you, and honestly, you really only lose if you lose the lesson. Like there's always a lesson. Uh, I mean, these are kids. These are 18 to 22 year old young people that are having to that that work their butts off, and they're having to deal with disappointment, and you know, and and, and failure, and, and especially in this arena. You know, we always in this arena it's a little different. You know, just because it's so public and, you know, there's just, it's, a, it's almost a sport to criticize and attack and things like, it's like a sport of its own, uh, who can be the best attacker, who can be the best criticizer, who can be the best, you know, whatever. Um, that's just, but that's the, that's the world we live in. And so, you know, it's an opportunity to, you got a challenge, you teach, you encourage, and you, you, you know, it's, again, you grow. You, know, you pick yourself up and you keep going. That's I always say tough people win in the end. You know, life is hard. Tough people win in the end, and the only reason they win is because they keep going. You know, you keep going. You just you, the only only time you lose is when you just give up and you stop. So yeah, we lost a football game. That's that's football. It's hard. College football is hard and gonna get harder. There's gonna be very few undefeated teams as you move forward, and I think that whole perception will probably slowly change a little bit. Um, you know, a lot like you have in the NFL uh, now. I mean, um, because the, the parity is going to be even more and more. But, you know, we, we did not deserve to win that game last week. We didn't deserve to win. I mean, you got to do what it takes. We didn't do what it takes. It doesn't, you can't change what it takes. I always say, greatness don't go on sale. You can't get it, you know, uh, you know down at the Dollar General for less than what it costs. You, you, you have to pay full price every single week, and especially when you're at a place like Clemson. You're going to get everybody's best shot. And, you know, we've got uh, uh, a lot of really talented players. And, you know, some of them are more mature than others, and, you know, uh, some some are really, really mature, and they get it, and others, they don't, you know. And sometimes you just have to learn through some setbacks. Uh, but there's always setbacks. There's always setbacks, but that's why you got to be resilient. People who win are resilient. 
You know, I mean, people who who ultimately succeed in life are resilient, and they have a desire to keep on keeping on. That's what resiliency is. It's overcoming setbacks and obstacles and disappointment, and failure by a desire to keep on keeping on. That's what resiliency is. So you gotta be resilient. You get a chance to teach that. You'd much rather teach the other stuff, you know, because it's more fun when you win. But the reality is, is we're, we're you know, five and one in our league. Uh, there's 17 teams in this league. You know, we're not out of it. We don't control the destiny, but we control our decision on how we're gonna respond, how we're gonna practice, what we're going to do about it this week. That's what we do control. So let's focus on what we control, lock out the rest of it, and get back to work. So, Are there adjustments needed in run defense or is it simply a matter of execution, especially knowing the guy you're going to face this week? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to have to be a lot better at doing what it takes to stop the run. You know, to stop the run, you got to set the edge, you got to be gap sound, you got to defeat blocks, you got to be relentless. You got to trigger and fill gaps when you're filling it from second and third level. You got to tackle it. It's not complicated, and so you got to do those little things better. Devo, given the, the the issues with setting the edge, with uh, pressuring the passer, as you look back on the decision to not um, make a concerted effort in the portal to get a defensive end, was that the right decision? Yeah, I, I, we 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 love our roster. Sometimes you have some injuries and things like that. Uh, you know, don't have any regrets on how we put our roster together this past year. Chris, how, how have you evaluated, I guess, the depth behind Peter when he's been hurt now? How do you feel you leave that position? Uh, we're growing. You know, uh, Jaheim's done some good things. Hoffler's really coming on. We feel like he's developing. Uh, you know, Armand is getting a little bit of experience you know, uh, as well. but. You know, Peter's definitely one of our best players for sure. But we got to keep getting better. Gotta keep getting better. Fortunately, we got most everybody back, and I think they'll keep keep uh, developing. Darren, update on Peter. Yeah, he's, he's day to day. You know, K Park is is out uh, for sure. He's going to be a, probably out a little while. Shelton's probably done. Uh, he's got a, a toe injury. Uh, not sure if he'll make it back. Over these next four weeks or three and a half weeks, where we got left, it'll probably be hard for him to get back at that time. Very similar to what Antonio had last year, uh, so maybe postseason. But but right now he's probably not going to make it back these next three and a half weeks. But you know, listen, everybody's got depth problems. Everybody's got it's the same. You know, everybody has different challenges. Uh, you just gotta you gotta gotta get the next guy ready to go. The appearance of some of the, I don't know if it was communication issues, but offensively, just maybe some of the flow wasn't where you would want it to be in the game on Saturday. Just if some of that been addressed, is that just an average offensively? Of one game? Yeah, from the offensive stuff. I mean, we just didn't finish on some of the drives and we didn't kick the field goal. I mean, that's, that's the problem. I mean, 16 to 29 on third and fourth down, it's hard to do better than that. 200 plus rushing, 200 plus passing. Uh, you know, we just, but there was still more there. But the biggest thing is we didn't capitalize to, you know, because we were struggling on defense, we didn't capitalize to take the low when we had the opportunity. You know, we had a chance to make it 14 to three and we got a good drive. <clears throat> you know, we ended up a chance to get another, to get a field goal. And we got we got the tip ball, knocks us out of field goal range. Then we got the other two times that were, were down there. One was inside, what, the 10 yard line, I think. And get two block kicks, um, and we get a whole serve, you know, to where we're, uh, you know, so, so we wasted a lot of time, and we had a million, 101 plays, a bunch of first downs, but we didn't get the points to go with it, and so that's that's a that's a really double edged sword right there, you know, when you don't when you don't finish in the in the red zone. So we just that was the biggest frustration. I mean, they played physical, God, man, those guys played tough. We had what three, three or four offensive linemen play 101 snaps. Mafa played 98 snaps and got better and better and better. I mean, I just their mentality, how they're playing, their toughness. I mean, Cade competed his butt off. I mean, they played the last. I mean, they really did. We just there were just we just missed some opportunities to finish. We had a couple of really critical uh, miscues. 
that we could have punched it in on that we didn't uh, capitalize on. But you know that that certainly didn't help us. We could have overcome some of the other stuff and, and maybe created momentum. Momentum, you know, uh, affects a lot of things in the flow of a game. But we didn't we didn't get that done. That was the biggest disappointment uh, offensively. But you know there was a ton to be pleased about. It just we just didn't we didn't get the points that we needed to get with that type of production. That's a that's a very uncommon production what we had offensively. It was like I said, it was an anomaly. No turnovers. You know that type of third down production. That type of uh, rushing and passing, and you lose the ball game. That is, uh, it's only happened twice in 129 years. So that's just it's a, it's a weird deal. But again, you know we didn't. It's a we played no complimentary football. I mean, very uncomplimentary, and you end up getting beat. That's what happened. So we gotta we gotta put it together. We gotta get back on track. We gotta play complimentary football. It's the first game in a while we didn't get a takeaway. Um, and uh, so we gotta we gotta win. Gotta do the things it takes. We gotta win the big play margin. We gotta win the turnover margin. We gotta be the least penalized team. We gotta stop the run. Be able to run the ball effectively. Those are all things that, that lead to winning week in and week out. And uh, obviously the issues that we had with field goal protection, we've got to get we've got to get corrected. Talk about opportunities in the red zone. What have you seen from Virginia Tech? <clears throat> excuse me, in terms of a red zone defense, uh, they're aggressive. I mean, they're an aggressive attacking defense. I mean, I think again, they're really good up front. Uh, you know, they have, they have a lot of press coverage. Uh, when you get down in the red zone, and they'll 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 they're going to light you up. They're going to force the issue. Uh, make you have to make you know, contested throws and quick decisions. So good good football, good team, good defense, well coached. And uh, again, I mean, I'm sure they're really frustrated at, at um, are, they, are they five and four? Is that what they are? Four, four, what are they? Well, they got four losses. Uh, what are they? Uh, are they four, four, five, four, five, four, five and four, you know, because they're four plays away from truly being nine and up. I mean, it's that close with their season right now. It's that close. So this is a team that's uh, played tough, but again, it's hard. It's hard to win. Sometimes you, you know, it comes down to a couple of plays, and, and I think I felt just like the other night. I felt like if we could have made just two or three plays or more, we could have affected the game more offensively. And it was two or three plays on the other side defensively that if we correct, it it, it doesn't feel the way it felt. But that's football. That's football. Were you surprised at times at the lack of you had an offensive lineman get run over on his back on a field goal? The lack of physicality at, in, at times? Uh, I, not on our offense. No, defensively. Uh, you know, yeah, I thought, I thought we got our butts kicked. I didn't think we were physical enough, didn't play hard enough. I mean, it, it was just what we burned the tape. It's not what we've seen, you know. Uh, just burn the tape. It's not, that's, not, that's not what we've seen. Our guys have played tough and physical, but I did not think we played anywhere near to the standard. Now, there were a few guys that did. You know, you hate to paint with a broad brush, but it takes 11. And as a, as a collectively, as a group, uh, you know, that's a tape they just need to burn and throw away because that was that was hard to watch. I thought y'all had 179 yards late in the third quarter and, and, and seven points. Are you, are you saying that what happened after that is what made the offensive yeah. swing? Well, we, yeah, we didn't finish. We didn't finish. We had two block kicks. We had another scoring drive with the tip. Uh, the, the tip ball uh, opportunity. So we miss if you make those points, it's different. You know, it's a different deal because they got ten points off of the two block kicks. Um, we had a fourth and one. You know that <clears throat> honestly they just got us. Uh, they had a nice. We had a motion guy and they triggered the motion guy right through the gap. And you know so just kind of had to tip your hat to them on that one. Uh, sometimes that can happen in football. Um, but they you know, just didn't. But they they kept playing. They competed their butts off, and they finished well. They finished well. You know, uh, with, with a couple really good uh, scoring drives, and just didn't didn't do enough throughout four quarters. So that game's over, guys. Let's move on. We're playing Virginia Tech this week. What are you gonna talk about? What does Broom's percent uh, turn lies on and difficulty, especially when you combine the running back with him? He he is he is a He's a really good player. This guy's big and strong. Uh, he's, he can make all the throws. 
And honestly, I didn't really know who the other kid was till I watched the tape. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a very good player. This guy can sling it. And uh, he's not quite as big, but he's still a really good runner as well. But Drones is a grown man. I mean, he is a grown man. Uh, you know, he makes a lot of plays with his legs. He extends a lot of plays. There's good chemistry with that group of receivers uh, that he has. So they will involve him big time in the run game, you know, with, with, with design runs. They do a lot of that, a lot of the power read. Uh, so he's a, he's a handful. Where is your uh, confidence level in Ashton Hanson? I guess with Lewis out, his role is going to possibly expand moving forward. Uh, young player, we got a lot of confidence in getting better, <coughs> and uh, you know, hope, hope he can continue to, uh, you know, we can we can keep him progressing like he is, and, and get him some more opportunity as we go. I mean, you know, with Shelton out, that, that certainly, uh, you know, changes things a little bit, how we look at it, and hurts us some. But, you know, Khalil, get, Khalil gives us a ton of flexibility and where we can play him and creates, you know, options. Uh, regardless of what we do, he can play, you know, he's certainly our best nickel, uh, but he can play, you know, strong or free as well. And, you know, that would be a, a kind of personnel of who you're playing and, you know, how you feel about everybody else and where they are right now. Kind of a week to week deal. Coach, so you talk about moving on to the next week. What element of the team are you most excited about seeing the bounce back or seeing that? You know, Our defense. <laughs> we got to, we got to, we got to, we got to respond. You know, it's, it's, <clears throat> these guys, these guys, it's what they do. They run the football. I mean, they can line up and run the ball on anybody. So we got to respond. You know, we got to, again, do it. They're, they're, they're a stretch team with the exception of they. They will mix in a little bit more midline. They'll mix in a little bit of stretch wham, you know, where they're crack, kind of whamming back with the tight end on, on your, on your uh, interior. Uh, so, you know, we just got to, again, do what it takes to stop the run. And we talk about those things all the time. And, and for the most part, we've done a nice job of that. Um, you know, but we, we, we did not last week. And again, that, that's pretty evident. So just excited to see them respond. and. Uh, Hopefully they'll they'll play like I know they're capable of playing, and, and uh, you know, not want to experience what they experienced uh, last week and this week. You know, in in response to the performance, they'll want to get a little better result. Is that Tyler Brown is still week to week? Yep, yep, getting better, getting better, but you know he's still he's still week to week. Any questions for Coach Virtually? Anybody else in the room? Yeah, has, has, has the knee attack changed up its outside zone stuff through the course of the year, altered anything, or adjusted? Or no, I'm just, you know, they'll mix in the wham stuff with it. You know, uh, you know, when they bring the tight end back and, and you know, block on their interior. But I mean, it's just pretty much the stretch. You know, running with that, without that. Got the boot, all the boots. Uh, got a million. They run, they, there's not one trick play they haven't run. There isn't one. Uh, they've got a reverse off of every play. They've got halfback pass, reverse pass, flea flicker, double pass. Uh, there, there, there really isn't the tight end throwback. Uh, they, they, they've, they've not only, you know, installed them, they've called them. It's all on tape. So uh, you got a flea flicker, and you've got to prepare uh, for a lot of things that they put out there. Wildcat, you know, they, they've mixed in some wildcat as well. So they, they challenge you in a lot of ways, but the main thing they want to do is they want to run the ball. And, uh, and then mix in the passing game off of that, but it all starts with this quarterback and this running back. Uh, good, uh, two, two really, really good players. The mindset of being resilient and overcoming setbacks and failures, how much did you learn that from your mom, rather, whether DNA or just watching her model that? Uh, yeah, I certainly, my mom, my mom, very inspirational person to me. Just you know, she's those who've met my mom. She's like four eleven. She's you know not a very very tiny lady, and uh, <clears throat> but you know she she had scoliosis really bad in the forties. Polio, you know, had to uh, live in an iron lung for a while. You know, those of you who are old enough to know what that is, and and then she she had to have a 
I used to, as a kid, I used to look at her, like, you go to the, by the pool or something, be like, you know, because she had a zipper from the top of her neck all the way down, and she had to have a, a cadaver vertebrae built, you know, because, I mean, she was, you know, completely crooked, and, uh, and so she had to live in that body cast, and, I mean, she just, you know, and away from her family, you know, my grandmother just, you know, she'd get on a train, and ride to Birmingham, Alabama to see her on a Friday, Saturday, and then she'd have to get back to get to her job. So she lived, she was alone a lot uh, as a kid. And, and uh, you know, again, a lot of you know, people told her what she probably couldn't do. She, you know, again, probably not have kids. It's the way her body was built. Uh, probably not be able to, you know, even you know, live a normal life. But not only did she get into normal school, she graduated from Woodlawn High School. And, and I think uh, I think her senior year, they actually featured her on the I don't know if it was the Birmingham News or Post Herald or whatever. I think it was called Cinderella Story. I've got it in our attic somewhere. But she actually was a majorette her senior year. And but she, you know, got married at 18, uh, had three boys. You know, again, so she's just she's always had limitations. You know, because of you know just all the challenges within her body. But she, you'd never know it. You'd never know it how she's how she's lived. And, and, that's, and she's a fighter. She's a fighter, man. I mean, and then as a kid and watching her and what she went through, um, you know, just with struggles with family and addiction in the home and, and divorce and, you know, all those type of things. Um, but, man, she just, she, she'd find a way. She'd go work. She'd cut hair. She worked at the mall. She would find a way. She'd do whatever it took. And, I mean, I, you know, she was a lot of motivation for me. Um, you know, especially when she's living with me in college, um, you know, and getting up every morning, driving an hour to work. And, and you know, that was a very motivating factor for me to, uh, <coughs> you know, get my education and try to make a better path for my family. And I really wanted to make, you know, like a lot of people, you want to you help, you want to make your, your family's life better. I certainly wanted to, you know, wanted to see my mom happy and, Wanted to be able to help her in her situation, and, and uh, so you know that's been one of the great blessings of my life is to be a, you know because I saw her really really struggle, and then to see her now, and man Larry Papa Larry was such a blessing. I mean when he came along and and married my mom and, and just man you talk about I mean you know not that it was a burden but it was just always one of those things that you know was at the forefront of my mind. Of, take care of my mom and um, man Larry just he, he's been one of the amazing amazing blessing you know he's been a great grandfather mm -hmm. to our kids and so yeah mom mom's been a she's been very inspirational uh, for sure uh, but she's a, she's a tough person so that's where I think a lot of that comes from just a lot of my you know my grit I've had a lot of success uh, that a lot of people know about but I've had a lot of failure had a lot of disappointment, you know, and you know the reason I'm standing here talking to y'all today is you just already keep going, yeah, you keep working, you know. So it's what I do every day. Wake up every day. I love what I do. I love where I do it. And man, I give, I give my very best every single day. Every single day, I give my very best. Sometimes your best ain't good enough, um, you know. But man, you got to be committed to being and doing your best every single day. That's what I try to do. Tried to go vote, tried to go do my best and vote this morning. They told me I couldn't vote. Uh, that was quite a experience. Uh, anyway. Because I'm little? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, what, that's, what I, that's what I said. I walked in there, I was like, okay, so right after school, I guess it's gonna be perfect. I walk in, I'm the only person in there. And they're like, hey coach, you know? And then, I, then they hit the thing, I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't give you a ballot. That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, dang, they done voted me out of the state, lost the game. <laughs> Six and two and five and one, man. We, we they done shipped me off. Uh, but no, they, they said, uh, he, he said I'd already voted. And I was like, no, I can assure you, I hadn't voted. Uh, well, it says we issued you early ballot. I'm like, and you voted. I'm like, no. And as it turns out, Will, my oldest, voted last week. And they somehow 
messed it up, didn't verify his birthday or something, and they counted me as the vote. And uh, so yeah, it was uh, what well, was going to take ten minutes. It took an hour. Uh, next thing I'm on the phone with some director named I think her name was Amy, super sweet lady, and she's trying to tell me this whole process. I'm like, so there's going to be some hearing on Friday, and you know they're going to. I had to do a paper ballot stuff, and I'm like, it was it was quite an experience this morning. Uh, but apparently they're going to fix it on Friday and. Me and Will, our two votes will count on Friday. I don't know if it'll matter on Friday, but yeah, uh, it was uh, trying to do my best and be a good citizen and, and go vote. And sometimes doing your best ain't good enough. You know, you to keep going though, keep figuring it out. All right, anything else? Uh, the initial uh, CFP rankings come out uh, today. I guess will you be tuning in or keep an eye out for when that release? Uh, no, I, no, not really. Uh, I'm sure I'll hear about it, but no, I'm not. I'm not tuned in or sitting there waiting. I'm trying to. I'm trying to find a way to beat Virginia Tech. That's all I'm worried about. Uh, you know, as y'all all know, a lot can happen in college football, right? Just when you think you know, uh, just when you think you know, uh, you don't know. I was talking about that last night. You know, because they were all making fun of me yesterday because I had on my, my 2003 warm up. Uh, that, I, that I keep and like to wear. And that's one of the things I remember about that. We were five and four and probably about getting ready, about to be shown the door. And we went from five and four to nine and four and had one of the best finishes. And, and Coach Powell got coach of the year and I got to keep my job and stay at Clemson. Uh, mm -hmm. So that was, uh, you just never know. You just keep going. You know, a lot can happen in college football. So my, I'm not worried about any rankings. I haven't been worried about any rankings. I'm just worried about trying to win the game that we got in front of us and, and go from there. That's why, again, that's why they call it a season. You try to do the best you can. And, uh, man, we got we got great kids. We got a really good staff. Uh, we got a bunch of people that work really hard. And, again, nobody's perfect. But, uh, man, love, love, love our kids, love our team. And, uh, you know, we got to – we got to certainly do some things better uh, to have the finish that we want to have. But um, you know, you, you try to try to win a championship every year. You try to win every single game. And, uh, there's, you know, the reality is we've had one undefeated team. You know, and it, it's hard to do. But the reason we've had so many great years and great games and great moments is because we we finish. We just we keep going, and that's what we got to do. We got to go try to have a, a way to win this week. And, and uh, just start where you are and try to create some good momentum moving forward. But man, I'm, again, I love I love our staff, I love our players, and you know, certainly it's disappointing when you're hurt when you lose a game because uh, we put so much into it and we have such great support and hate to let people down. But that's football. Uh, you got to keep moving forward and see if you can win the next one. That's what we'll try to do. And then you let the chips fall where they are, and then you and then you regroup, and get ready to go, and, and uh, fight again. What we'll do. Someone trying to get in virtually. We'll give you one last chance to do so. Yeah, appreciate it, Ron. Hey, Dad, it's uh, Chapel from the state. Um, you've kind of touched on uh, what players have been so waiting to do better, run game wise, uh, coaching wise. But where do you think any improvement needs to happen from your defensive staff? Uh, everything that the players need to do better, that's that's on us as coaches. It starts with us. So we got to do everything better. We got to. We got to. Teach better, coach better, you name it, across the board. We got all the things you got to do to stop the run. Uh, we, we've got to obviously do a better job this week than we did last week of coaching and teaching those things. Anyone else for Coach Sweeney? All right, all right, appreciate it.